Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living side-decking boo-boo stain of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I'm sorry I haven't posted in, like, what has it been now, two days? I've just, I've been under the weather, y'all. My cancer meds have been kicking my ass. I haven't slept in, like, a day and a half because I've just been up all night with nausea and it's, it's a thing. So anyways, don't worry. I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better. Just trying to reintroduce the meds back in my system after being off on freight days. But anyways, we are good. And I appreciate all of the support that each and every one of you gives to the channel. So I want to do a little bit of a different tier list this time around. I've never done a side deck or not, not a side deck, excuse me, a hand trap tier list before. You know, we've talked about the top decks and we did a ban list tier list where we talked about stuff that could get banned and whatever. I want to do a, a hand trap one because I feel that especially moving into photon hypernova the hand trap uh I guess tier list the hand trap squad whatever you want to call it the the amount of hand traps that will be viable I think is the best way to say it is going to drastically change come photon hypernova depending like what a ban list will bring us right you know like I've seen some people say they're going to ban Nibiru. I'm like, they're not going to ban fucking Nibiru. Like, if you think Nibiru needs to be banned, please go touch grass. We haven't said that on the channel in a while. <laughs> um, but with the release of full power cash tier, or rather the new support in Photon Hypernova, you know, things like Sphere Mode and Nibiru are going to very much see play because it just instantly outs cash tier. Like, they don't have a way to stop it, you know, minus things that cross that designator, but that's just kind of bad. So I figured that we could talk about the possible side deck choices that we have and moving into 2023 and also this format as well because yeah you may feel like you only have certain options for hand traps right now but again that's really going to change come 2023 so let's start off with the obvious buy steals if you're not playing these cards i don't know what you're doing they are strictly better than dd crow honestly dd crow is going to go in the booty booty butt cheat category because it's just liquid dog ass compared to the buy steals the buy steals the fact that they are I think all of them are literally Dark Magician stats, like 2,500 attack, 2,000 defense. They are big-ass beaters that are hard to get around, and they're quick effects if the opponent controls a monster. So even on your turn, if like the opponent for some reason doesn't have a monster, you know you still have access to a 2,500 attack beat stick that can also get you to the Wallow Founder Dragon, which is a really good card, I might add, like essentially for free. You know, if you're playing something like Flunderies and you have a D Shifter engraved, you can banish the D Shifter, summon out the Buy Steel, and then your, your other shifters are online. I'm not saying that Flunder should play Buy Steals. I don't even think they're even playing Buy Steals right now at the time of making this video. But it's something to consider, especially if you are main decking something like Dimension Shifter. If you're not playing Buy Steals, you're at such a disadvantage. It hurts everything, whether it's tier in the mirror match rogue something like grimaju like i was playing against my dad the other night with tear just to test the matchup and he had a gizmic in his grave and he tried to use the gizmic effect and i just buy steal the shit out of him and he lost it like you know yeah you get the banishing if you're playing like grimaju but like other than that you just lose so much advantage that combined of course with like medora and keldeo for more graveyard interruption is just just absolutely disgusting next up here d shifter uh you you either got to be main decking it or side decking it. I'm going to put it in the side deck since I feel like more decks would probably side deck it than main deck it. Because really the only decks that are main decking it right now is like Flunder, maybe some Sprite builds, maybe Crystal Beast. But you should only really be playing that at Locals in my humble opinion until they get the new Equip Spell. That Equip Spell is actually pretty fucking disgusting. And, you know, it. I think it's more of a side deck card. I think... Don't really feel like that that's really going to change much come 2023. You know, Kashtira can main deck it. Flunder can main deck it. But again, I, I feel like more, the majority of decks are going to side deck it more than main deck it, just depending on the matchups and stuff. Let's see. Let, let's jump around here. So this is going to be an example of what I mean post-2023. Right now, if you're playing Nibiru, stop doing it. Nibiru is hot garbage. <laughs> like, no one's playing Nibiru right now. Even Sprite, that plays around 12 to 15 hand traps, just to stop tier is not playing Nibiru. The issue with Nibiru right now is that if you're trying to Nibiru something like tier element, if they're sent to the graveyard by a card effect, which obviously Nibiru is, they're just going to get to mill, which is going to give them more pluses, and then they're just going to kick your ass to the sun even further. Whereas once we hit post photon hypernova with 2023, again, barring any sort of like huge ban list things, right? Like maybe they just kill cash tier before we even get it to full power. Or they just don't touch tier for whatever ungodly reason. Nibiru becomes a much better card because again, 
Kashira is trying to build their board, they hit you with a Rise Heart, Shangri-La, and Diabolsis. Well, once they drop out that Diabolsis, you do like what a guy did to me last night on EDO Pro. You hit them with the Nibiru, and they just lose. Like, that's why I'm playing going second Kashira right now, because, you know, if you have a Nibiru in your hand, it's going to be pretty dead if you're trying to go first. Like, yeah, if you open with it and I'm going second, fine, you open with it, whatever. But it's the fact that it just totally blows Cash Tira out of the water. Like, you've got to be playing Nibiru post-2023. Uh, let's see here. Token Collector is booty booty butt cheeks. If you're still playing Token Collector, you're too worried about Sword Soul. And if you're worried about Sword Soul, you need to be changing up your deck. No material. No. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh... No, no, no material is fucking awful. Um, isn't this like the fucking Cyframe thing? No one's playing this card. Stop it. No one's playing whatever that is. Stop it. Um, so Gamma's experimental. Uh, Gamma is cool. I don't really feel like it's that great right now because, again, if tiers, tier element cards being sent to the grade by a card effect, just say thank you. But moving into post-Photon Hypernova and maybe some random rogue decks you may come across... Gamma with the driver package could potentially be good. Do I feel like you have better choices like the buy steals? Fuck yes. <laughs> but I mean, if you're playing in a local meta game, this could potentially be something that you could pants people with, especially if they're not prepared for it. Because remember, it negates and destroys. And, you know, some things just say negate the effect, like Ash. So that, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, contact C. I don't even really feel like post-2023, this is really going to see play. You know, I'll put in the experimental. I'll put in the experimental. Uh, Phenomaze, it's, no, it's fucking garbage. N links are not being played in excess like they were with, like, Goki format, where they would just U-link you out of existence. It's not even really experimental, because Kashtira is not a link deck. So, like, what are you playing Phenomaze for? Like, we're not in salad tier one format anymore. Um, this is the other C card. I'll put an experimental. The The thing is with the C cards, they're always experimental. Like, I would almost put them up there with, like, the Ghost Girls. All of the C cards, minus Max C, obviously, because it's banned, tend to come in and out of formats. You know, it's different with things like No Material or, you know, even, like, Phantomaze, because... They're more for, like, specific decks in the format, whereas you want hand traps that cover a broad range, i.e. Gamma, Shifter locking out of the grave, the Ghost Girls negating certain effects. Phantomaze is just, okay, you have a link-heavy deck in the format, play Phantomaze. If you don't have that, then why are you even playing Phantomaze? Like, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see here. Droll. I got hit with this the other day on EDO Pro, and I'm like, who the fuck plays Droll? It, it, I literally typed in, I'm like, why are you playing Droll? This card's garbage. But I am going to put in an experimental because I feel, I feel like possibly post-Photon Hypernova that we could see this. In fact, you know what? I'm going to say post-Photon Hypernova, you should be playing Droll because Kashtira does search a lot. You know, they go Unicorn to search a spell. You Droll them. Now they can't search off a of Fenrir, especially if they need that extra extender to search them another card. Th this could potentially come in clutch. Uh, let's see. Lancia. I'm going to put an experimental. If Flunder somehow ungodly becomes a tier one deck, then you just play Lancia and you win. Um, Skullmeister, sure. Experimental. Valor. I feel like you can't side deck Valor. I feel like you need to main deck it, but I'm going to have to put it in the Photon Hypernova 2023 because there's no reason to play Valor right now because, yeah, it's not once per turn, but it's like, what are you doing against tier? They're going to play through it. What are you doing against Sprite? They're going to play through it. Like, I just, Valor's not good right now. And I can't really say that it's a side deck option because why are you wasting a slot on Valor when you could be using it on a board wipe like evenly? Uh, Chaos Hunter is fucking trash. Imperm is, Imperm's experimental. Like, I got hit with that the other day and I'm like, why the fuck are you playing Imperm? Like, unless you're playing Sprite, like, that's cool. But I feel like Imperm is just kind of better than Valor because, like, they can't call by the Imperm. So if you're going to play Imperm, I hope you're playing Sprite. If not, I don't know why you're playing it. So now we're down to the Ghost Girls. If you're not main decking Ash, don't play it. Um, Ash, I feel, will always be a good card. It's just the level at which it is good depends on the format. Something like Tier can just play through it. But it doesn't belong in your side. It's not anything else experimental. Like, it, it's, it's just good. Um, Ghost Bell's a side deck option. Sure, sure, sure. Um, Spooky Dogwood, if you're going into time, especially right now, absolutely. Absolutely, it's good. Winter Cherries. 
I'm going to say it's side deck potential because especially moving into post-photon hypernova, like you can hit the opponents like Shangri-Las if you have one in your extra deck, which is really disgusting. So yeah, th this is this is definitely good side deck material. Um, no, don't don't play this card. It's basically a Valor, but worse. No, just just play fucking Valor. And Ogre, Ogre's fallen off, man. Like I I cannot justify playing Ogre in anything. Like I can't even justify you side decking it because we have so many better hand traps right now that Ogre is just. It's not what it used to be, which is a damn shame. I remember when this card was like 60 bucks a piece on release, and it's just really fallen off. That's not to say that it's bad. It's just that out of all of the hand trap options we have, there are so many things that are better than uh, Ghost Ogre that I don't see why you would play this unless, like, I don't know, Telephone FTK? Even then, like, it, that's the problem with Ogre is that it doesn't even negate the fucking card. It just pops it. So, like, unless you are just absolutely worried about fucking fire formation tanky and you ogre the shit out of it, like, I guess. But, like, if you're that worried about a tanky, like, you need to change up your deck, pimp. Or you need to go to a different locals if that many people are playing tanky. Like, it, you're you're not getting good practice against rogue decks. I don't know. It just, it's a damn shame. Re rest in peace, ogre. I don't think ogre will ever see play as it once did, you know, back on release. So, guys, let me know what you think about this tier list. Do you think I made some good points? Is there any hand traps that I'm missing? Uh, like I said, I don't know how to make a tier list maker. And the one time that I tried to, like an hour ago, it was taking me fucking forever to get that shit set up. So I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to use one that's already pre-made. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there any hand traps that I missed out on? I guess you could consider Sphere Mode a hand trap. But again, it's, it's just a Nibiru with a different coat of paint. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.